Welcome to another tech video. Today we're going to be having a look at a new little gadget that will turn your NVMe M.2 drive into a USB connected device. Okay, so this is from a company called Fideco. This is the M208 CPS device. And as it says here, it's an M.2 NVMe slash SATA SSD enclosure. It's USB 3.1 Gen 2. So predominant, predominantly it is 10 gigabits a second um, USB. And it gives you the ability to turn your M.2 drive into a portable USB drive. So let's have a look at this. First of all, so a use case for this would be, um, or a classic use case for this would be just to store your files on rather than using a USB drive. It should be uh, much faster. And I've got a, uh, a USB 3 uh, drive that I can, we can do some tests with. But let's have a look inside the box and see what we get. Okay, so that's nice. So you get a little screwdriver and a um, mounting base screw. Inside here we've got a type C to type C USB cable or a type C to type C USB cable and here we've got a USB type A to USB type C cable. We've got some instructions and then at the top of the box here we've got the unit itself. So let's get that out. Put that all to one side. So before we start uh, pulling it apart, let's just have a quick look at the user guide. So um, we've got our LED lights specified there, USB-C port, uh, how it works. You connect it to your laptop or PC or device or whatever. And then this shows you how to connect your drives. And the supported protocol is M.2 NVMe slash SATA. Supported SSD size is 2230, 2242, 2260 and 2280. Okay, supported SSD interface. M key or B and M key, and that's on NVMe. And then on SATA, it supports a B and M key. So I've got some, um, I've got some drives here. So here we've got uh, this is a B and M key, which, which has the two slots at the top here. Then we've got a SATA connector here, um, or an M.2 SATA. And then we've got uh, an NVMe M.2 drive. So we're going to test all of those and see if that all works. And then it shows you how to connect, how to install, and then different languages. Okay, so let's get into here and have a look at the quality. Okay, this is nice. Uh, so it's um, a metal housing, uh, metal end, both metal end so it's all metal which is which is quite nice uh, let's have a look does it say which end we have to take out don't think it does so in theory we should be able to just take it out of this side so let's put those drives to one side for a minute and then let's uh, take out our screwdriver that comes with the kit We'll remove this end plate. You can make sure you don't lose the screws. Screwdriver handle is very small, so um, it's a bit fiddly. Okay, let's see how we can get this out now. Let's see if we can get the plate off. Okay, it's a bit tricky to get the plate off, but or the end plate, so I'm just going to... There we go. Just flip that off like that and then the unit will come out here. So there's not too much to it. There's a connector, there's a USB type C connector plate, and then we've got our three mounting brackets for the different sizes. And then on the back, you've got the circuitry and the, obviously the, uh, the controller on there as well. Okay, so let's put that on there to start with. And first drive that we're gonna try is this um, b and um, SATA drive. So let's see if this uh, works. So we want to put our little mounting screws. So we'll take our mounting screw. 
this is quite impressive I'll just put this on here so you can see it a bit better so you get a couple of additional screws in case you lose them and then you've got your bracket that sits or your mounting block that sits on there like that so we're going to mount okay all right so that's fairly straightforward so we take our drive that slots in here okay and then we take our little adapter that slots in the top there Go okay, like that and then we take our screw which goes in underneath and you want to use the little tiny silver screw it goes in the bottom there again it's a bit fiddly and that just screws in like that which goes through there and then you've got this uh, this little counter uh, groove around there that's that you slot into the to the drive and then that holds the drive in place and then we can slide our card back in as you can see on the on here if I just point this out on here you've got two little slots that the card slides into so that goes in like that and then you take your cover and put your cover back on and screw that into place. The only reason I'm using my own screwdriver is because the handle is very, very thin on the screwdriver that comes with the kit. It's difficult to uh, to hold. There we go. Okay, so that's that all back together. We've got our drive installed in there. Now we're going to take. I think I'm going to use uh, USB A to C. That just connects in there and then I'm going to get my laptop. So the laptop that I'm using is a Dell XPS. It's got uh, it's got a type C and it's got a type A port on there but I'm going to be just using the type A port. I'm going to connect that into the port like that. Now on this side all I'm doing is I'm connecting a um, USB Type-C hub that's got HDMI out so we can capture the video. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to go in and see if we can see it in a disk management. So you just type in disk management, create and format hard disk partitions. And let's see if we can see our drive in here. So here's our drive. So this is a 128 gig uh, M.2 drive that's connected via USB. So we want to create a volume on this. We do a right click and say new simple volume. Click on next. Uh, we're going to set the defaults of maximum size and we're going to assign a drive letter uh, of drive D. I'm going to click on next and we want it. To, you can either set it for NTFS if you're only going to be using it for, for Windows or if you're going to be using it for anything else then potentially you can use the XFAT um, uh, file system but we're going to be using the NTFS and we're going to call it um, ext-drv external drive and click on next and then we're going to click on finish that's now formatting the drive or so it's saying there we go okay so we're going to now we can close our disk manager down and we can go into our file explorer we can scroll down and we can see here's our drive our d drive and that is now ready for use right so we've got a 10 gig file that we could use to do some tests but we're going to actually run crystal disk mark and check out what the performance is of this drive so we're going to open it up and we want to do uh, select our D drive and then we're going to hit all and that's going to run the test on against that D drive okay so here are our stats for our um, data so sequential read at the top two uh, random reads are the bottom two sequential writes and random writes um, so you can see the performance of this m.2 drive connected in this unit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a, a snip of that and 
we'll then change the drive out and we'll have a look at the uh, the next one okay so we now we can take this drive out now so to do that you do exactly the opposite so undo the screw on the bottom like that take out the little puck as i like to call it move that drive so this one here this is a kingston um kc2500 this is a 250 gig drive so we're going to get that one installed and we're going to run the, exactly the same crystal disk mark test and we'll run the same tests again Select our D drive, this is, picks it up 232 gig and we're going to click on all and we're going to run this test as well. Okay, and again, here's our performance from this drive. Um, so it's fairly similar, although the write speeds are a lot better. So let's now just pull up the previous one. Okay, so you can see here that uh, this is a, certainly a faster drive, um, especially if you look at the, so look at the sequential read speed there, um, it's higher. So 20 megabytes a second higher. Um, sequential read again uh, is 20 megabytes higher. And on the random reads, it's much higher. Look, look at the difference, 36 versus 153. Uh, random 4K, 14.01 um, versus 26.25. And then on the write speeds as well, sequential write speeds are much higher. And random write speeds is slightly lower on that drive so and it's pretty much the same against the random write speeds but certainly sequential writes are much much faster on that and then finally for our last drive we're going to be using this uh, samsung 970 evo plus so this one's a brand new drive and we're just going to be having a little test of this one so there shouldn't be any data on here. So we're going to take our drive. You can see the 970 Evo Plus NVMe M.2. So that's going to slot in there. And there we go, our LEDs on, so it's reading it. Okay, so let's go back now and see if we can find it. Might need to format this one by the all accounts. This PC, USB drive E. Yep, so we need to format this one as well. So we're going to do disk management. You must initialize a disk. Okay, so we want to initialize the disk with GPT. We're going to say OK to that. And then we can create a volume on there. We're going to do a new simple volume. I'm going to take the maximum size, 500 gig, assign it a drive letter. I'm going to call it ext drv, all the others. Okay, there we go. So that's now visible there. Um, as you can see, we're going to say no, we don't want that annoying thing. Right. Let's get on to Crystal Disk Mark and then run the tests on this drive. And there's our D drive there. So we're exactly the same settings. We're just going to click on all and start that. Okay, so here are the stats from all of them. So this is the latest one that we've just done with our Evo Plus, and you can see the stats are pretty similar to the one below. So it looks like we have got a bottleneck on our uh, USB for reads, potentially. Um, so it's important to note that the speed of this drive will be based on what your USB can do. So on this laptop, um, this Dell XPS laptop that's about 10 years old, it's USB 3. So this device, um, this device here is Gen 3. Point, uh, it's USB 3.1 Gen 2, 10 gigabit a second, but that is based on whether your machine can actually do that. So if you've not got a USB 3.1 Gen 2 uh, USB port, then the chances are you're not going to get the, through, the full throughput and you shouldn't waste your money on a super powerful SSD drive if you're going to be throttled by your USB throughput. So um, yeah, it's, it's all based on your uh, USB throughput basically. So, you know, don't go off and buy yourself a really expensive NVMe, NVMe drive if um, 
you can't take full advantage of your USB speeds, i.e. USB 3.1 Gen 2, 10 gigabit a second, which you'll get much faster throughput. But for our use, uh, it's a really useful tool. So let's now do one final test with our USB hard disk. So all we're going to do is we're going to remove that from there. And then we're going to take our Maxdor two and a half inch drive. So this is a portable one terabyte drive. We're going to connect that into exactly the same port, USB 3. Okay, so we've got our Maxdor USB drive connected. So let's go ahead and run these tests again on this drive. All right, so that test is now finished and you can clearly see um, how slow a USB drive is compared to an NVMe drive. So in terms of the benefits of this Fideco device, um, yeah, massive benefits. Um, we're certainly gonna be using um, a one terabyte M.2 drive in, in this device and it's gonna replace our old <laughs> Maxdoor USB 3 drive. You can see here, let's, uh, let's talk through the sequential reads um, are well down on an NVMe drive and sequential writes are also well down on an NVMe drive. And then the random reads and the random writes where you can see quite clearly there um, that you'd be much better off with a M.2 drive. So let's remove that. And let's give you our final thoughts on this. Um, one thing that I didn't say was there, there's an LED light on here so you can see when there's disk activity. So um, in terms of the unit being metal, if there is a lot of heat that you get out of it, if you are running USB 3.1 Gen 2 and you've got a super fast SSD drive, M.2 drive in there, then you'll find that this does get warm, but because of the metal housing, it will dissipate the heat quite nicely. Um, so that things don't overheat um, and our thoughts on this yeah it's a it's a good looking device and it's a real asset to any toolkit or if you want to transfer your data between systems and um, then this is uh, well recommended with uh, with a decent m.2 drive in there so if you found that video useful give us a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel um, and just for your information you can find this on Amazon and we'll leave a link to it in the description below. But I just want to say thanks for watching and your continued support and we'll see you in the next one.